Hello, I'm Liam Bowen. I'm the head coach at UMBC. I'm here with Figure It Out Baseball. We're taking a couple of our pitchers through their daily throwing routine. We just got done the plyo drills that we do up against our, on horse stall mats up against our outfield fence. Now they're going to pick up a baseball and start their daily throwing progression. Luke and Gabe have picked up a baseball and they're getting into their daily throwing progression. Each guy on our pitching staff has a different set of drills that they use to just start to get the feel of the baseball and get the ball to come off their hand. Gabe, he's the one on the right, for instance. He's a guy who's really been working on his changeup, and he's going to do some drills at different points in his throwing progression where he starts to use that changeup. Luke is a guy who's just continuing to work on getting a full rotation into every throw, and the drills, some of the drills that he's doing are going to promote that. So this particular drill, um, or the one that Luke just did, uh, and the one that Gabe's doing with the changeup, is a drill that's where the, the, the movement in their hands is going to promote consistent rhythm and tempo in the delivery and then we're just trying to get them to rotate out in front of their body by keeping their feet static and getting the hand out in front. The next particular drill that Luke is going to do is going to be about creating slope with his shoulders and his belt. So in the video about our plyo work I mentioned this but this is a really critically important concept that I think a lot of people miss when they're coaching pitchers. What Luke's trying to do here is as he moves towards Gabe, he's trying to keep his upper body kind of stacked over his back leg. You can see that. If you drew a line in his shoulders as he started his move towards Gabe, that line would be slanted where the back shoulder would be beneath the front shoulder. That's so important because it's going to allow him space in front of his body that he can rotate into. It's, I always equate it to throwing a punch. It's the same thing. If you were going to throw a punch, you wouldn't get chest to chest with the guy that you were punching. You would have to have some space and then rotate into that space. A lot of pitchers don't do a great job of that, and Luce continued to work on that, and I think that's been to his benefit. So as these guys start to throw, they're going to start moving back a little bit each throw. We don't give guys a specific number of throws or a specific distance on a given day that they need to go. What you really need to encourage your guys to do is develop a relationship with their arm and you need to structure their programming so that they understand what the level of intensity that they need to use on a particular day is. Right now, Luke, our player on the left, is on what we call a green day. He's gonna be throwing to hitters in about 20 minutes or so and he's getting his body hot and ready to throw. All right. Obviously, green means go. It means we're going to compete or we're going to throw a bullpen on that particular day. Gabe is on a yellow day. Gabe is our pitcher on the right here. And a yellow day for us most of the time means a flat ground. It can mean some other structured work. Uh, but he's coming off a recovery day, and he's looking to peak again on Monday. Right now, it's a Friday uh, here at UMBC. So um, each guy is going to attack it a little bit differently. And you have to give each guy enough experience and you have to monitor them enough to where they understand when they need to peak and what they need to do to reach that peak and what I would always tell guys is um, you want to uh, you want the the, the throwing load um, if you let's say you're working on a Saturday to Saturday uh, type of timeline where a kid pitches for you on a Saturday and then he's gonna um, pitch again the next Saturday you would want the throwing to uh, maybe peak around Wednesday or Thursday so they're not throwing as much in their throwing progression. They could even take Sunday off and maybe they're not throwing a ton Monday, Tuesday. They're peaking Wednesday, Thursday, which is going to be uh, probably when they're throwing their bullpen and then they'll taper down a little bit to make sure they're ready for the next Saturday. But I, I firmly, firmly believe that putting restrictions on guys and giving them a rep count or giving them a prescribed distance for throwing is going to in the long term really holds you back. I really think each guy is, a re is really different in uh, the kind of athlete that they are and the kind of arm that they have, and you have to give them a structure that they can really start to make some of their own determinations within, and they, and they can kind of use their feel and um, just use their experience to start figuring out what the best thing is for them. One thing I've always believed as a pitching coach is there's absolutely no substitute for throwing. If you're trying to get guys to be fit and durable throwers, then we do a ton on the strength and conditioning end, and I'm a huge, huge proponent of that, but even our strength coach would tell you there's no substitute for getting out and throwing the baseball every day. Our guys, when they're in season, if they want to take 
maybe one day a week off at the most they would be able to do that otherwise we're going to be throwing and it, it it's up to me as their pitching coach and then it, ultimately up to them to regulate the intensity and make sure that they're peaking on the days that we need them to peak all right right now these guys uh, have gone out to their max distance for the day, which for both of them wasn't terribly far today. It wasn't a big long toss day uh, for either of them. Uh, most of our guys, Gabe included, who's the pitcher closest to us, actually long tossed yesterday. And then uh, Luke is getting ready to throw to hitters very shortly now. So uh, they're both throwing the ball on a line, and Luke is starting to dial up his velocity uh, to get ready to compete. The big thing you're going to look for in every throw is – some sort of rhythmic element there has to be a rhythm and a timing to every throw we get their bodies ready in their warm-up we build the movement pattern that we want we basically get their mechanics right up against the wall with our plyo drills and now it's time to make that consistent with the baseball in our hand and to do that there has to be some kind of rhythm i don't think guys get better with their consistency and their mechanics by thinking in a mechanical way very very few pitchers can pull that off what most guys use to be consistent is a, is a steady rhythm and timing in every throw. So I'll even have guys count out loud. When they grab the ball, I'll have them maybe shuffle their feet, count one, two, three, four, and then let go on four. But basically some kind of steady cadence to where they know the ball is coming out at the same time every time in their throw. And that's what I firmly believe develops command. When they got out to their max distance, they did that by throwing the ball on an arc. This is the, the Jager long toss program that's been around for years. Alan Jager popularized it. And I think it's definitely uh, the way to go in terms of creating a basis for a guy's daily throwing. They threw the ball on an arc on their way out to whatever their max distance for the day is going to be. Today's distance wasn't super far. Like I said, it wasn't necessarily a, a big long toss day for either of them. Yesterday, guys were throwing the ball 300 feet on our turf lacrosse field. When they come in, they start to throw the ball hard, and it's their challenge to take whatever distance they created throwing the ball uphill and turn it into a downhill throw. And as they progress in, they come in maybe about 10 feet per throw. They're starting to throw the ball. They're still throwing the ball hard. You know, it's, it's not a matter of throwing the ball harder as you get closer. It's a matter of throwing the ball with more angle as you get closer. So by the time they're maybe at about 90 feet, they're really letting it rip into each other's chest. It's Liam Bowen again with UMBC Baseball. Our pitchers just got done their daily throwing progression. From here, in a typical practice, they would move to whatever what we would call pitch work they have that day. So that can be competing against hitters, that can be a bullpen, that can be a flat ground, that could be a structured set of drills. Whatever they're working on from an execution standpoint would be next. Once that is done, they would get into their post throw routine, which is their arm care uh, and their conditioning, and that would be uh, that's going to be part of our next video.